debt of gratitude to Jeff and Eric for doing this year after year. And first of all, it helps our bridge because we get some really great uh, uh, advice during the half hour. And second of all, their support of the club, not only tonight, but throughout the year, is also very much appreciated. And uh, I think I better give you the time rather than trying to say anymore. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we're here to start our try and win the Grand National again this year. We've won it playing together 12 times. Uh, we had won it five straight years, and then we uh, stumbled last year, so we hope to get on the winning track. So we're here to answer your questions. I'll give you a quick tip, and that is open lots and lots of week two bits. They're great bits. Fire them out there. You know, good things are going to happen if you open a lot of week two bits. Eric, do you have a tip that you'd like to give them? Well, I see Bud there with his hat on. I'm going to tip my cap. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, okay, yeah, here we go. When uh, the opponents open a week too big and uh, your partner doubles, do you play level so over that and do you modify it at all? Okay, the question is after a week too big and your partner doubles, yes, we do play level so. We do modify it. Like, Bidding three of the suit, forcing as it would have been over a one no trump opener. It just says that you have some points in case partner has a good hand. So you do have to play it a little differently. Most experts do play it. That's why my advice is open lots of week two bids because it creates all sorts of headaches for the opponents. So, so do you also use two diamonds and two hearts as week twos and not other conventions? Yeah. Uh, we don't play two diamonds as a week two bid because we play precision. But uh, I played against Jeff the other day, and he was playing the week two diamonds playing standard, which is as good a treatment for the two diamond openings. Yes, Definitely, I, that's what I like to play is a week two diamond when I'm playing standard, because I want to be able to bid diamonds, because bidding good suits is important in bridge. If you don't bid your good suit, then your problem partner is probably not going to lead it. So I like to be able to get the diamonds bid. Yeah. Max, play question. You ever let your opponents play in two of a of, of a suit? Well, the answer to that is yes, absolutely. It's all about what kind of fit they have. If the bidder does one hard pass, two hearts, pass, pass. I'm much less likely to let them play that because they're advertising they have a heart fit. Okay, that's, when you open a heart and your partner bids two hearts and it goes pass, pass, aren't you glad when they pass it out over there? See, you're happy to play it in two hearts. That's what they want. So you don't, you, you don't want that. That's not good for you. But conversely, if it goes, say, a spade and no trump, two clubs, two spades, that could be very well a misfitting auction that you frequently want to defend in, the, in those kinds of auctions. Yes? How weak of a two open two are you use? Okay. Well, I mean, it depends on the vulnerability and the quality of the suit. One thing that people say is like having two of the top three honors is important, like king, queen, five, four, three, two. But I'd rather have jack 10, nine, eight, six and like a side card or two because I'll take more tricks if I get doubled and partner as a single one. So the interior texture of the suit matters, and the distribution matters. If I'm 6'4", I have more playing strength than if I'm 6'3", 2'2", with like double 10 queens and jacks. But typically like 5 to 10 would be normal, but you keep in mind these evaluation points. Yes? Would you preempt with a void? Absolutely. You, you don't want to restrict yourself on preempts. You want to be able to open two spades if you happen to be void in some other suit. You don't want to have, you have these restrictions. Pretty much no restrictions is, is my advice, yes. Yeah, yeah Jeff, when I was kidding to you guys at the, one of the Nationals, I noticed that you were playing a strong jump shift. I think it complicated, I believe, the bidding on one diamond. I think you got a one heart over call and then a two spade bid. And you played that as a strong jump shift. Yes, well that, that's a complex answer due to, due, due to our methods, which I don't think is really appropriate for this uh, discussion. We'll be better to move on. I'll answer that question privately for okay. you later. Okay, yes? Mm. So you open two of a minor if you've got three of a major? 
Oh, yes. In fact, you might want to do it with four of the other majors. I'll give you a couple quick examples here. I mean, if you have a hand, say, king, queen, jack, ten, six of spades, you don't care if you have four hearts. I mean, it open two spades on this hand. But if you have a hand like six spades to the king, nine, and say, queen, jack, four of hearts, now that's a very problematical preamp it's much more likely that you need to play this in hearts. So I would be much less likely to preempt this hand. But again, no restrictions. You don't want to say you can't open two spades. Because every time you open two spades, lots and lots of good things are going to happen. So. <laughs> and a few bad things. <laughs> yes. Does your seat placement matter in situations like that? Not, not too much, not too much, no. I mean, there's some school of thought that you should be sounder in first and sec first seat rather than second. I happen to think the opposite, so it's not so clear. And yes. what's your, what your partner's response to your week two opener? Uh, we like new suits non-forcing for uh, the obvious reason that uh, we don't require a super good suit necessarily for a week two, but and let's say you have like 14 points and five hearts and partner opens a week two diamonds. Partner has two small hearts and six points, you're in a good contract. If partner has a heart fit, they should give you a raise, and then you might or might not have a good game, depending on how well you like your hand. So like he was talking about getting your good suits in, your partner gets <coughs> his suit in, but you want to be able to get yours in response. And two no trumps should be asking for some kind of description. There's nothing terribly wrong with the old fashioned asking for a feature or rebidding your preempt shows that you have a dog, and bidding three no says you have no feature, but you have a really good suit. <coughs> and you might have to make up a feature, like with nine points and queen jack third of clubs. I would answer three clubs to tell my partner I have a decent preempt with something in clubs. I'll add to that what I like. See, I love opening week two bits so much, I do it with five card suits sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it works quite well when you have the really good suits, say King, Queen, Jack, and Fifth, and some distribution as well, say a single and somewhere. Those week two bids work really well. If you start doing it, you'll find out that, and you'll start doing it on weaker and weaker suits, and you'll find out it doesn't work quite so well. <laughs> but, so I like to know Trump to ask how many you have in your suit. And the response is three clubs is I only have five. And then I show minimum, medium, maximum uh, hand when I have six or seven in the suit. So, okay. Yes. I had this discussion with a few people here, and I want to know if you and Eric do this. If, if you open, let's say, a minor, and your opponent next to you on your left does a takeout double, which is kind of implying he's got majors, your partner has four of a major and six to nine points. Would you expect him to bid that major? Well, that's a, that's a question. A lot of times I do, but a lot of times I will not bid it also. If I have like four little in a major, or four to a ten, I don't really want to bid it when they made a takeout double because I don't want my partner leading it. So it's just sort of a bridge judgment situation. So I wouldn't want to really be bid a week four card suit very much. I might skip it and bid a no trump. So yes. Hand evaluation question: Do you add a, 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 an extra point for five card suit? Let's say if it contains two honors, so you might open up a no trump with fourteen points if you were playing, you know, fifteen to seventeen. Or uh, the the other side of that would be to accept with fifteen points in a five card suit if you were invited. Well, I mean. You look at the whole hand. I mean, things that are good to have are aces, uh, honors in your long suits, tens and nines in your long suits. Bad things are stuff like king, queen, double, thin, queen, jack, tight. All right. Uh, team captain Nick says he always deducts a point for having ace, king, queen, triple thin. I'm not sure I'm on board with that one. but um, So you look at the whole hand. You have king, queen, ten, nine, fifth of a suit, you know, a few aces, and, you know, a side jack. I would bump that up to a note. Might depend whether or not you're vulnerable. Yes. You open uh, one no trump with a five card major and only two in the other major. 
We're a five card major. We we like to do it when we're five three three two distribution, uh, not really worrying about whether we have two or three of the other major. So, but if you're a five card major with a side four card suit, then it rates your best odds are to open the major. Okay. Your your question about hand evaluation was an interesting. Situation. How many of you have heard of the rule of 20? That you add up your long suits and points. Well, here's a couple of hand examples that show you what a difference hand evaluation will make. Okay, here's one that absolutely you need to open one spade, regardless of who you're playing with, regardless of any any vulnerability or anything. But suppose you have a hand like this. You have the same 5-5 five, five in the majors with 10 points. The extreme difference between this pile of garbage <laughs> and this beautiful, exceptional hand. Okay? And there's all the variations in between. So you just have to sort of gauge just how good my hand is. Okay? All right, who's next? Yes? Do you all uh, advocate the use of fit showing jumps in competitive auctions? Our opponents, at least at the games we play, um, seem to like them. They have some merit. Um, but then, like, let's say it goes a spade on my left and my partner over calls two hearts and it goes two spades. <coughs> I think most people would agree that I don't need to jump to four clubs or four diamonds to show a long club or diamond suit. I committed it to three level. So the question is, do you want to play a chose singleton or void in the suit with heart support, what we call a splendor, or do you want to play a chose values in clubs with heart support, which is a fit showing jump? Uh, we prefer the former, but uh, some other people prefer the latter. I would say with conventions, whatever you and your partner can remember and understand and works for you is what you should play. And different people get doubt conventions that work better for them, it seems to me. So if it seems to come up a lot for you, then I'd play it. We, it doesn't really seem to come up much for us. So we tend not to play it. OK? Yes? 20 years ago, precision was the top um, way to play bridge. And that just kind of died. And now you guys are playing it here. Is it? Is it you find it in the larger competition? Oh, well, I, I would have to correct the statement you just made. Precision is more popular than ever. Uh, pairs like Hampson and Greco uh, play in the club system that they got from us. And so do Justin Law, Kevin Bathurst. So pretty much every professional bridge player plays that system nowadays. So. And it's, it's uh, I must say, it's an improvement. You get better odds than you do at standard. There's enough good things in it. So, yeah. so I've got a couple of partners. We play precision. We spend a lot of time understanding the system. But what we find out is that when the opponents interfere, we also need to spend almost as much time working on the system when they interfere. Well, How I've, do you guys handle that? I've always said the best defense to a big club is a three-spade ever call. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, it, the thing about precision is you need a regular partner like Eric, something that you can really work on together. It has to be, you just can't sit down with a casual partner and play that system. Now, how much of your time is spent looking at uh, when opponents overcall versus uh, understanding? Well, uh, over, after 40 some years of playing together, we've figured out how to deal with it. <laughs> and a lot of times when they bid, it helps us because we know how to play the hands. Yes? When we played in the GNT last year, we got a, a lot of teams, even though we were in the C area, we got a lot of teams who were playing the weak no trump or lower point count in the weak no trump, and it kind of messed us up. How do you guys handle uh, a weak or no trump? Your well, system. I mean, uh, one thing you do, uh, some people like to play uh, what Mechwell over, over no trump openings, where a double is artificial or a double, which is very similar to Mechwell. But uh, if they play a weak no trump, you have to play doubles as you have a good hand. Uh, generally speaking, we play shows 14 plus, but that's a, a guideline as well. 
and then you, if something simple applies it to two glove overcall shows the majors and over that part it can be two diamonds to ask you which major you're longer in and any other overcall is natural good. And, and more limited and it's as good as anything I'll add one thing you would like to try and do when they open a week no trump against you is go headhunting and try and punish them. Because if they don't have the values to be out there, and if they don't have a fit, you've got them. So you want to have a double show points and then be able to uh, crucify them if they don't have the values and a fit. That's the easiest way to win at bridge. Okay, that's why you want double to show a good hand. Okay, who's next? Playing upside down count, can you give us some examples of how that differs from standard count? Okay, well, a standard count would mean low from an odd number. So if you have like a five to the queen and declare leads the suit, like usually if you're defending and declare leads a suit, your signal if it means anything is count. You don't always necessarily want to give count, but if you think it's more important to your partner. So you play the deuce with five to the queen to show an odd number. Uh, with upside down count, it's just the opposite. The deuce would show an even number, and high lowing would show an odd number. So it's just the exact opposite. Uh, we like upside down because there's more holdings where you can afford uh, to signal accurately as it happens with upside down. I mean, you have to look at various holdings to see it. Uh, for those uh, who are confused about defensive carding, Andrew Garnett wrote a book, and I helped him with it fairly recently, to try and explain all the ins and outs of defensive code. And I don't think it's that expensive. I might want to reference you all to that, because it's a detailed explanation. It's Charlie's stepson, and I'm sure he knows how, how that would be available. So that's a really comprehensive examination of defending of defensive card. So. Thank you. Yes. So using uh, account signals upside down or others, uh, I've learned when to use them. Some cases are obvious. Declare has a long suit on the board. No other entry. You want to tell your partner when to take his trick. But more importantly, to develop the habit, I'm always giving count. I next need to learn when not to give count. I think Andy did a good job in the book of sorting out all the different signals. Because there's three types. There's, you know, attitude signals, like I want you to leave this, come on, partner. Count signals saying how many you have in a suit, and also suit preference signals trying to tell partner which of the other suits you like. So I think you'll like his, uh, Derek, he's bringing some up now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get a single sense of this. I help, I help with the project, and it's the best book I've seen about carding. So. Uh, okay, someone else. How about someone new? Uh, here we go. A sport coach. How high do you recommend playing? I know most people play the Guys and why. Um, okay, support double, first of all, is a double saying you have three card support for your partner's suit. Now, it was originally conceived was like a diamond by me, partner responds, save one heart, and they overcall one spade. A raise to two hearts promises four trumps, and a double shows three. Um, it's a sound idea, it's become sort of, you know, very popular. But there are some questions about when it applies. Like originally it was only eye open partner answers one of the majors. But like we like to play in some other situations, like I overcall, say it goes one club, and I overcall and my partner responds a spade and they bid double shows three and a raise shows four. So the first thing is to define what options it applies to and what it doesn't. Uh, you'd be surprised how many questions there might be, like suppose it goes a club pass and the partner bids a diamond, which is not a major and they overcall. So a lot of people like to play doubles to support double. But I would say in general it doesn't apply except when you and your partner have agreed that it applies. We like to play it uh, higher because we play precision. So if it goes like a diamond pass, a spade, and maybe three clubs, I'm a lot more likely to have a hand with three spades and a desired bid, like say with a single club, than I am to have a penalty double with three clubs. Standard, you 
you've had more problems. But I'd say play as high as you, you and your partner are comfortable playing. Does it change with whether you're a third seed opener or not? We run into a couple of situations where with a third seed opener. Well, I mean, with a third seed opener and in general, uh, I gotta say you open with nine points. You don't have to bid again with three card support. You can just pass in a support double situation. But I, it's, since a lot of times you open in third seed with a real legitimate opening hand, I would say it should apply in the same situation. Support doubles are my favorite convention. And for those of you who don't know, there's the inventor at the convention back in the 1970s. He invented it because he played with a gentleman by the name of Ken Bloom, who was kept raising him with three card support. <laughs> and Eric was in a habit of responding on three, and so Eric got sick and tired of his partner raising him. And he called it the Bloom Obstinance Double. <laughs> And it's one of my favorite conventions. I play it all the way up to four sure. of a major sure. when I've opened and they respond one of a major. Could you, no, if no, it no, does like a club pass the spade and they bid four and hearts, yes. it's very unlikely I have a hard <clears> stack <throat> and want a double for penalty. The hand I usually have is a big hand that has three spades and short and hearts. So, I mean, I like to play it all the way up to four of a major. Yes. I understand you gentlemen open up all 11 point hands. Do you have any advice for we mortals with respect to which 12s ought to be open? Well, we, we open aggressively, but we're, we're selective. We do not open all 11 point hands. We, we probably open almost all of them when we're not vulnerable, but we're, yeah. uh, I might very well pass my partner's one of a minor opening because I don't really have a major to bid. Because if you have a major suit, you might actually have a game, you know, in that suit. So it just it depends on what they deal you, what the vulnerability is, what the risk is. I'm much friskier when I'm not vulnerable than when I'm red. So, uh, how much do you play your opponents versus just playing uh, the cards and the odds? All right, I think I'll, I'll take that one. I mean, it's. I mean, bridge is multi-dimensional game, and being able to read what your opponent's problems are is part of the game. You know, that's why I like playing at, at the table bridge as opposed to like online bridge, because you know I can sometimes figure out if they're having a real problem. I can figure out what's going on. <laughs> it's fun, you know. Yes. Does your strategy change when you're playing a match game versus a team game? Oh, well, yes. In pairs, you want to be much less aggressive than, when, than if you're in a team game. Much less aggressive? Yes. In pairs, there's no real game bonus. So, I mean, you want to get plus scores in pair games. And you want to fight for the part scores aggressively in pair games. But as far as pushing the games, you don't want to overbid in pair games. In team games, that game bonus is everything. So you want to bid, bid games like crazy, you know, and to just try and make them. That's a Mechwell game try. We bid it, and then we try and make it. <laughs> <laughs> yes? If you go one of a major, two of a major, what would three clubs mean for you, normal? Okay. Well, we just play like one spade pass, two spades, for instance. Three clubs just says I have a, a try for game, and I don't want to say anything about the rest of my hand. So it doesn't mean the suit? No, but suit. three diamonds are three hearts. If I don't bid the cheapest suit, I definitely have that other suit, and I want you to evaluate. Because some hands you just don't want partners to look that much, and then it's holding in any particular suit. And that's a message that you need to be able to send. I noticed over in Orlando the, the, the fellows of your ability were playing behind the walls. What prompted all that? Yeah, that was just the setup of the room. There were just the pillars. You don't always do that. No, they, that was just a random occurrence. Now, in the national and international tournaments, they play with screens dividing the tables. Screens. But uh, that was just happened to be the hotel. So, okay. Couple more. Yes. Uh, last year talk a little bit about making 
Well, uh, I did some things. Uh, I had a pretty good year. Uh, it's, it's about concentration. 